Hey guys, Matt from Mr. Matt's Arcade here. Today we're going to do an overview, an instruction video for my four player pedestal cabinet. On the rear of the cabinet there's an on off switch and an HDMI port. This four player pedestal cabinet is running the new Alpha 3D Max game board. The game board takes a little while to boot up. So you have your player one side right here with six buttons, player two with six buttons, player three is over here on the left with six buttons, and player four is over here on the right with six buttons. And then up at the top here you have player three start, player one start, exit, coin, player two start, and player four start. And this particular model um, came with the graphics kit upgrade which has the graphics on the control panel, on the front, and then on each side as well. And this one also opted for the LED trackball upgrade. Comes stock with a regular trackball, or you can upgrade to the LED. The dimensions of the cabinet are approximately 48 inches wide. 30 inches deep and about 36 or 7 inches high. It comes on locking casters to make it easy to move around. On the back there's an HDMI port and a power plug port. Both the power cord and the HDMI cable are removable and included are long cables for both of those. Also on the back, which I'll show you towards the end, there is an access door so you can open it up to reach in to get to the settings menu button. And there's also a removable back door if you needed to get in to the whole insides to work on it. So it boots up to the game selection screen and it starts you out in the 3D category. You can go up or down on the joystick to go game by game, or left to right to go page by page to navigate. You can actually navigate with any of the four players. And once you find a game you want to play, you press the A button. And the button layout is the top row is A, B, C. The bottom row is D, E, F. The other ways to find a game is if you press the player one start button, it brings you up here to the search menu. If you press it again, it brings you over here to this top menu where we have a couple of categories. We have 3D, 2D, favorites, recently played, and then brings you back over to search. In the search, you can break it down by categories. We have versus, shooting, puzzle, action, sport, racing, four player category, which is perfect for this game for this arcade machine. It's a nice, easy way to find your four player games. And then you also have a trackball category, a nice, easy way to find your trackball games. And then down here, it breaks it all down by emulator. So we have Dreamcast, N64, MAME, which is one of your arcades, PSP, PlayStation Portable, PS, PlayStation, SFC, Super Nintendo, FC, Nintendo, GBA is Game Boy Advance, GBC is Game Boy Color, MD is Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. FBA is your other arcade section. And then PCE is PC Engine. And there also are original Atari games on this game board as well. They just don't have their own category. So we can, let's go up to, or you can go down here to the search and you can type out the name of the game you're looking for. Let's go up to the categories. So let's go into the four player category. A will bring us in there. And then start will bring us over to the menu. And now these are all your three or four player games. This game board also includes some console system four player games. The previous game boards that I've used only had arcade four player games. This one actually includes some console games. We have some Naomi, it's an N64, and I think a few others. 
So let's load up a classic. Mario Kart 64. Your A button will load it up. So your button layout is top row is A, B, C, bottom row is D, E, F. A lot of the games will just use the top row. Some of the console and fighting games will use all six buttons. Usually the easiest thing to do is just press each button and see what they do since there's so many different systems and games and buttons and everything. And to exit, you can press the pause slash exit button, brings up this menu. Um, some of the games support save state, so if you do save state and then go back in later and do load state, it'll pick up where you left off. To quit, you go up to quit, hit the A button, and that'll kick us back to the main menu. press the player one start button again and now let's go and type in a game. So highlight the letter you want and press the A button. And then once you type in all or some of the name, you press the player on the start button, and that'll bring you over here. Now here's all the games with Simpsons in the title. And here's the one I was looking for, four players. And it is the arcade version. A button loads it up. Press the player start button for each player. button. We'll do save state so I can show you how that works. Uh, press the exit button, go back in, do load state. Picks us up right where we left off. The other thing to show you is if you want to add a game to the favorites menu, um, when you find the game you like, you press the C button. It'll put a little star next to it. And now if we press the player one start button twice, and once rather, and go up to the top menu, here we go. Here is the Simpsons four player game that we saved, that we favorited. And we'll load up a trackball game to show you, and then we'll move on to the settings. Press the player start button, Go up here to trackball, press the play on the start button, and let's play, let's load up Golden Tea. The 
It's had some very good bowling and golf games on it. The Golden Tee Series and World Class Bowling, Capcom Bowling, Strata Bowling. And then it has your classics as well, like Centipede, Marble Madness, that type of stuff. And as you can see, the trackball works nice. And this four-player pedestal cabinet comes with the larger three and a quarter inch trackball versus the smaller two and a quarter that I use in my other cabinets. Oh, too far. Oh, in the water. Let me spin it around here. So here is a ventilation fan. Here is your HDMI port. Down here is your power switch and an air hole. And then here is your access door. You open it up. Inside is your game board. You can reach right in and hit the settings menu. And that brings us into the settings menu. Spin it back around. So this first one to show you is key settings. This is your IO test. And on the right side of the screen, it tells you how to navigate and what buttons do what. So A will go in there. Key testing, that's our IO test. If you thought you were having an issue with a button and joystick, come in here to check. Once you press a button or direction, it lights up so you know that it's working. And everything's working, so we're good. Then you hold the player one start button, press the A button to go back. And that kicks us back. Uh, key definition, you can change the order of the buttons if you want. I think it's set up pretty good the way it is. And start goes back. And then you have graphic mode. This puts on a smoothing filter. It's either close, which is off, or open, which is on. Some people like it, some people don't. Just something that changes the appearance and you can see what you think. And down here we have game settings. A goes in. And here is game difficulty. You can edit the difficulty in lives of some of the games. Um, a button changes the difficulty. B changes the lives. And C applies your current settings to all the games. And then start goes back. And then you have edit games list. In here you can hide games. So if there's games you didn't want to have visible or ones you didn't want your kids playing or you just wanted to narrow down some of the games you can go through and turn them off one by one which puts a little mark next to them and then when we exit back to the menu they'll no longer be visible or the other option is you can hide them all and then go in and just turn on the ones you want and then B A hides individually B hides all, C show all. So let's turn them all back on. And then start goes back. And these other settings aren't applicable. Start goes back. And the only other one to show you is restore factory settings. If you think you messed up the settings pretty bad, you could do restore factory settings and it'll put it back to stock. When you're all done, you press the start button and that'll kick us back to the main menu. If you only did a couple of changes, it kicks you back pretty quick, but since I turned games on and off, it takes a minute to kick you back to the menu. Now if we had made any changes or hidden any games, the changes would show up. So that is pretty much the rundown of how to use the four-player pedestal cabinet running the new Alpha 3D Max game board. Um, this game board is still relatively new, and I think it's one of the best ones, if not the best one out there. And I'm really impressed with all the new features and systems that it has available. Um, and that we now have four-player console systems as well, such as... Mario Kart 64 and stuff like that. Um, 
let's see, other thing to show you up here on the top menu, here's your recently played games. So if you just played a game and you want to play it again and find it real quick, you can just go up to that. And then the other one to show you is in the 2D section to find the Atari games, you either have to search by name or you go to the end of the list and here's your original Atari games. There's quite a few of them on here. games list is organized alphabetically and by system and my version of the software has the system name suffix at the end to make it nice and easy to find the games and system you're looking for when you're all done you exit back to the main menu and you go and turn off the power switch that's the safest way to shut down and then that's everything guys so that is the overview and instructions for my four-player pedestal cabinet running the new Alpha 3D Max game board. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, game on, my friends.